This is a historical marker that tells a little bit of the story, but not our side of the story. It doesn't tell Labor's side of the story at all. Martin Irons was the leader of the biggest strike in American history, the Southwest Railroad Strike. He was a machinist working in Missouri, but they had their convention for the Knights of Labor it took place in Sherman, Texas. And at that convention, they decided to strike the Gould Line, the Jay Gould Line. Jay Gould was famous for saying that I can hire half the working class to kill the other half. And so that's what he proceeded to do. In 1885, the Knights of Labor defeated Jay Gould and won a big contract. It was the best victory the Knights of Labor ever had in their entire history. And thousands of people started joining the Knights of Labor. But Jay Gould did not honor the contract. He went right on with his idea of hiring half the working class to kill the other half. And there were fights all over Texas and all over the, the Jay Gould line throughout the Southwest. And eventually Jay Gould won. They killed so many people that they were able to break the strike. Martin Irons was blacklisted, never worked on the railroad again. He did work and was active in social causes and he worked for the AFL-CIO of uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So when they found out that he had died and was buried in a pauper's grave with no headstone in Bruceville, Texas, they came down here and put that headstone up. The best thing about the story is that after the headstone went up, a sociology professor from the University of Texas found the headstone and it inspired her to write the only book that's ever been written about the Southwest Railroad strike. And then she went on to write other books of Texas labor history and the whole, the whole uh, genesis of Texas labor history started right here at this tombstone of Martin Irons. So whatever we know of Texas labor history began right here where you're standing on the grave of Martin Irons. That's it. Okay, Martin Irons, a native of Scotland, Martin Irons, 1833-1900, came, came to the United States at the age of 14 as a machinist apprentice. After learning the trade, he lived and worked in numerous places throughout the country. By 1884, he was employed as a machinist in the Missouri Pacific Railway shop in Sendalia, Sedalia, Missouri. A firm believer in organ, organization as, as a means of, of individuals to improve their lives, Irons became an active participant in groups such as the Knights of Pythias and the Grange. While working in Sedalia, he became interested in early union society known as the Knights of Labor and was instrumental in organizing workers employed by J. Gould's network of Southwestern Railway Lines. The railway union known as the District Assembly 101 went on strike in 1866. <coughs> Irons, then chairman of the executive committee, came into prominence as its leader. The strike was marked by violence, and when it ended, Irons was blacklisted. He retired nearby Bruceville, but remained active in social reform movements until his death. Irons' grave, grave in the in the Bruceville Cemetery is marked by a monument placed in 1911 by the Missouri Federation of Labor. <laughs>